You know what? That song may be a little too nasty for some of my conservative folk in the building. <laughs> that would be my sweet girl cupcake. So I think we're going to stick to the, you know what? It's Friday. Let's get lit. Let's get lit. Let's get lit, honey. Let's play Suck Your Dick, okay? Because um, Mrs. Moore is definitely going to have to start tricking and going back to her old ways. Maybe this parking lot thought can teach her. Okay, some things so she can go out there and do what she got to do, baby, because of uh, times are getting real rough. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, God. They're getting real rough. Okay. Let me see her. Let me see her. I don't even know where that song was. Okay, here we go. <laughs> This is this is an old nasty Friday, baby. Okay, <laughs> you've been working hard through the week, baby. You've been taking care of the kids. Okay, you've been avoiding COVID, keeping the earth clean. Okay, using that fabulosso and that Lysol like you supposed to. Okay, mama needs some tension this weekend. Okay, I want to give you permission to get you a fine piece of man, baby. Okay, and have him come over. And make mama feel real good. And that also goes off to my tail, to my male patrons, honey. Okay, you've been doing what you need to do to bring home the bacon as a single dad, okay? Doing what you got to do, providing for the girls and the boys, okay? Daddy needs some sexual healing, honey, okay? He needs some intimate, grown folk maintenance, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with it, okay? Same thing for the couples, baby. Y'all out there surviving, you know, an unemployment check, okay? Out there doing what y'all got to do for the family, okay? All this virtual learning, whether to send the kids back to school, whether you want your babies vaccinated with this ratchet behind vaccine. It's a lot going on. Well, this weekend, honey, okay? I just need y'all to just make yourself feel real good. Okay? You gotta treat yourself, okay? You know, life is all about balance. It can't can't be all play and it, it, it can't be all business and no play okay you know that's how we get tense we get stressed okay we get we get we get we get we need we got headaches we need aspirins honey your tooth aching your jawline is breaking baby okay because it ain't no balance okay i don't care how many damn responsibilities you got in this world i don't give a damn what your commitment is you are also a commitment self is a commitment okay go we'll buy you a oh, nasty piece of heel baby oh nasty piece of tennis shoe you got to do something for yourself baby order off a door dash just something to remind you that life is enjoyable that life ain't all about obligations and commitment okay leaving you ineffective to be able to suck your man's dick with passion because right before you got to do that, you got to fold the damn clothes and pull everything out of the goddamn dryer and organize all the goddamn meat in that extra refrigerator, in that extra deep freezer y'all got in the corner of the kitchen, okay? So you got to learn to have those personal vacations, okay? So I want to say good morning, TGIF to everybody. I'm going to not be with you guys alone tonight. I know some of you guys are sneaking off 
um, risking getting fired from your damn job to listen in to this commentary and everything. So I ain't gonna keep you long. We just gonna get straight into things. I'm gonna play this old nasty piece of intro. Shout out to Angie's Angle, baby. Okay, for her number one, her number one single, baby, gonna win Grammys, going shit. It's gonna even win awards that ain't even musical awards like the Oscars and the Golden Globes, uh, video music awards, baby. Miss Angie. Angle is going to be a star when I'm done, baby. Because let me tell you something. I be getting my life off of this debut single, baby. I listen to this shit even when we not online, baby. I be banging this shit in my goddamn Cadillac, hunty. Yeah, the one with the um, the one that had the hood cap missing. Uh-huh. You know, the, the Cadillac that had the hood cap missing. Uh-huh. The one that's all electronic, honey, that I can zoom back and forth in, honey. That I got um touch screen, AC in, honey. The one that got a sunroof. Yeah. You know, the Cadillac DeVille. Uh-huh. The one that I proudly posted having only one cap, one hood cap on it that day. Uh-huh. Because I had crossed the old nasty speed bump, baby. And had to fuck up my damn tire. But nonetheless, bitch. A bitch got transportations to get to and fro where she needs to go, okay? Because this parking lot thought be me and to bop and to thought, honey, to get the motherfucking rent burn, okay? I'm a nursing student as well, okay? So let's get into it, you guys. Let's do it this morning, honey. This is a feel-good Friday. Oh, yes. Hey, what's up, Larry, hey baby? Listen, this? this is just a little remix to remind you that you are still the shizzmix. Don't even worry about Daryl Moore the Bum and his beat team minions because you had a purpose before they even had an opinion. You still got much love out here and you are still winning. So let those haters hate and let those trolls troll. Wow. They are just mad because they will never, ever rise to your level. Y'all haters ain't on his That was unfound. <laughs> Shame on you. Find something else better to do. Cause that same bitch that you dig in is the same bitch your ass gonna fall in. <laughs> you recruited El Cart. And his dumb ass keep no smart. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I think you want Larry Steen in your crack. <laughs> But they ain't never done a damn thing yet. You ain't, ain't you that gutter snake you who made fun of a Larry's rape? <laughs> You'll say it ain't so. You but when we saw you on a video, you shut the hell up and sip your tea. You because a badass you'll never be. You All you do is talk shit with that lame ass 18 clip. And now we got big little Kim who really just wants to sit in. I won't go in on you, sis. But you so much better than this. And Roxanne, Roxanne, Daryl don't want to be your man. He is just using it, you. Because he needs a thinking of you. Give you an A for effort, but you really got an E for epic failure. 
แล้วก็ควานะครับมิสซิสมูร์นทูเดอะเอทีนไอจิสต์วอนทูรีมาร์นจ้าวเบบี้ดัตบายเดอะยูนิเวอร์สย้าวเฮฟเบนเกรดเดอะอีฟอร์เอพิกเฟลเยอร์นั่นก็ครานะครับ like prophetically Mrs. Moore did <laughs> two days ago, disguising her tears as being so proud of the same son that handed her her process service papers. Okay, but she, uh, but she apparently was so proud. Okay, <laughs> that Fupa Junior had done graduated when Fupa Junior had just made him aware that the process server had. Had <laughs> handed him them papers through the screen, the screen though, and now Big Fupa was gonna answer to the big court. So kind, okay. so we know, baby, that them tears were tears of fury, heartbreak, disappointment, discouragement, the betrayal of it all. Okay, but of course, you know, Miss Fupa is all about saving face and. Pretending and acting, child. So she ain't gonna throw. She ain't gonna throw Fupa Junior under the bus. Totally not before the world, honey. Now she done slipped up. Then cuss Po Fupa Junior out in the background, yelling and screaming like a manic maniac and everything. Okay, but you know, she know how far to take it because she know the folk are watching. Okay, so you already know, honey. You know, Fupa was headed to the Heartbreak Hotel in that car, honey. It was so hilarious. All the screenshots folks sent me, baby, of all of the different frames of Fupa's crying, moment to moment, frame by frame, snapshot by snapshot by snapshot by snapshot. We got plans, baby. Oh yes. Uh huh. Now, what I need to do? Oh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of the cash apps. Thank you all so much. Even my uh, beautiful mod Desi just cash at me. I hadn't even hit the goddamn live button yet. And and my mod Desi, Desi Perkins in the comments section had them sent to oh nasty piece. Okay, of donation to the kids. So thank you all who have been donating. God bless you guys. You guys already know that you're so into this ministry. God make your life good. Okay, because when you're so into good rich soil. Okay. The payback and the payoff is always there as a confirmation and a receipt. Okay, so I want to thank all of my donors. Now we're here to talk about, as you can see in the title, how not to get your ass sued like Mrs. Moore by Larry D. Reed or any other individual for that matter. Okay, we also going to talk about 21 days to file an answer in a motion with the courts, which is what I want to start with first. Also, there's about 77 of y'all in the building. It's only 42 likes. Can we get these likes up if you're listening, please? Okay, I'm out here pushing the pavement, doing the work for you all, providing this continuity. You know, just give me a little, a little nasty piece of thumbs up. I promise you, it won't cost you nothing. Not two cents, not two dollars, not 20, not 45, not 100, not nothing, baby. Just tap that thumbs up on this video. Matter of fact, I'm going to let y'all get it to 50 before we proceed, okay? Because that'll be more than half of the streamers that are in the stream currently. So let's get the thumbs up to 40, I mean to 50 before I proceed, which is only four more thumbs up alike. Okay, y'all doing it. You know, I love y'all. Oh, yes. What's going on, Cam um, Camille, Kamali? Love Joe. I'm going to call you Love Joe. Hey, Emily, what's going on, Miss Old School? What's going on, everyone? Classy, what's going on? Baby mothers, concubines, everybody in the building. Okay, we, we passed 50. All right, so let's go. So I want to talk about this 21 days because you guys know that FUPA was physically served on Wednesday, okay? So now he officially has 21 days to retain a lawyer and have that lawyer um, respond appropriately to Larry Reed's lawsuit. Um, I'm going to explain to you what happens if 21 days are up and FUPA, who has said he's going to represent himself and then turn around and said he's going to retain a lawyer, he don't know which lie he want to tell today. So we just want to, we, we're going to talk about what will happen in, in either regard, what's required. If FUPA is going to represent himself, he himself would have to respond and file accordingly with the courts. Most people, because they're not lawyers, they don't understand um, filings, they don't understand court language, um, which is why people go to school and go to school for a long time to be able to do this, retain lawyers to do this. So FUPA would be unequipped to file or to respond or even to represent himself, okay? 
um, being some half baked paralegal that I could call and talk to on a free one, a free one eight hundred hotline. Um, does not make you a lawyer. It does not make you a student of the law. Okay. But it does get you a position at a call center where I can have your unqualified ass actually transfer me to an actual lawyer. Okay. So shout out to Fufa. Okay. For uh, his potential and being able to redirect your call so you can talk to a real lawyer. Okay, and not a goddamn paralegal. Okay, and then we're going to get into how to not get your ass sued. Okay, mm -hmm. hold on, let me let me make some arrangements here because these people here, you guys, have gotten themselves sued. Okay, hold on, let me share my screen real quick. Um, this would be the infamous uh low vibrating 18, the 18 here. Mm -hmm. You guys see that? Uh -huh. This would be the 18. These folks have got them sued. This would be the cigar vlogger himself in his original form. Uh -huh. This is before the botch ga gastric bypass. This is the original form. This would be Kimberly Shatler, a.k.a. Let me see your transcript, a.k.a. Florida Evans. Uh-huh. A.k.a. Mrs. Clumps, uh-huh. This would be Marcellus Macmillan. Mm-hmm. Also known as Mad Church Disease, also known as Mad Cow Disease. Yes, this would be him at his six-figure job. Look at look at that water fountain in the background of the Amazon uh, warehouse in the administration part of the Amazon warehouse. Oh, and look at that beautiful chrome, 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 chrome tablet there. Six figures, but needed donations to get a generation one Chrome iPad. Oh my God. Yeah. So these people done fucked around and done fucked up all of the damn church's money. Child done messed it all up, girl, done got themselves sued in the defamation lawsuit, girl. Gone, you know, text messages and devices gonna be subpoena, baby. This done got themselves in a wide and a war of trouble. Now, some of y'all been asking me about what's going on with mad cow disease here at the bottom with the chrome with the chrome ipad with the chrome with the chrome tablet uh-huh because it seems that on one hand he was compliant with the cease and desist and shut down his channel but he counteracted that by just going on to florida evans and fupa's platform okay to talk all his bullshit and to participate in the mess oh yes okay so cease and desist for him is null and void okay Mrs. Florida Evans and Mrs. Mad Cow Disease will put on notice as well and will be brought into this lawsuit, okay, accordingly. So that's what's going to happen there. Uh-huh. So these folks done got sued because they have been on Larry's ass for two years um, doing the goddamn most, but the straw broke the camel's back, okay, when they went to the extreme and alleging that Larry D. Reed, who you all know as our secular man and God, of God on these YouTube streets, social media influencer, okay? Been doing this thing for a long time on my space, on your space, on Facebook space, not on YouTube space, okay? And they pushed the narrative that this man had molested um, men who came from his ex-ministries. Now, everybody wasn't underage. Only the first accuser claimed to have been um, a teenager at the time, which was, what, 16, 17, which ironically is, you know, a statue of liberty, of, of, Statue of limitations. So that means that even the first accuser technically would not have been considered, okay, under age if he would have had any sexual contact hypothetically with anyone because 16 is the, is the statute of limitations in the United States of America, okay? So even, so I'm going to even go and say that even he was not um underage at the time that he alleged his so-called abuse okay and the second accuser uh pfft, hot ass mess third accuser even hotter mess okay 
So if you guys are just jumping into all of this stuff and you don't know kind of what's going on, I can't keep taking time in every single upload to give you guys the backstory. I've done the videos for a reason. You just have to take your ass back to the very beginning. I'm going to create a playlist on my channel that, and put things in chronological order for you, you know, from start to bottom so you can sit and do the research okay i done did the hard work i done i done i done did the hard work for you okay all you got to do is just be and listen and keep the hell up okay with the continuity so just go watch the videos and get the backstories and you know the interviews that i done did and all of that good jazz now fupa okay yeah the age of consent y'all know the hell i mean it's early high it's early yes the age of damn consent okay legal age of consent is 16 years of 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 age in the united states okay you can look that up in the books now we want to talk about this 21 days okay because these people have done the damn most now fupa was served on wednesday so his 21 days to respond to larry reed's lawsuit does not did not start until yesterday so 21 days from yesterday is his time to respond he's now officially on 20 days and let me tell you what's really ironic about that you guys is that fupa initially um made direct contact with me off of the strength of me helping bishop matthews to uh get william mccray process served and to sue him and it's ironic because fupa's initial start and claim to fame on youtube was um aligning himself with what i was doing which was unrelated because he was never um, you know, my partner in crime or anything like that, but he decided to latch on as a hungry clout chaser he is, okay, to what was trending at the time um, and to build up his platform. And remember doing, during the William McCray era, I also did a countdown, a 21 day countdown. Isn't it ironic that the same story that William McCray used, I mean, that Fupa Moore used, isn't it ironic that the same person, Mrs. McCray, okay, that he used to build up his channel, you know, he was dragging William McCray, harassing William McCray, calling William McCray, just, just, just absolutely harassing William McCray, okay, during this era. Talk about he need to respond to the lawsuit and talk about the lawsuit. Da, 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 da. Isn't it ironic that now he's on the same 21 day path to destruction? Isn't that ironic? That is so weird. That is so freaking weird. That's strange. But see, that's how karma work. It makes full circle. You get the same measure when you own your bullshit. And I already done told y'all that all Fupa Moore is, is William McCray with his wig off. So, so we're talking about the same person. So Mrs. McCray, girl, you're getting sued all over again, girl. We just sued you last, last year, year before last. And now the wigless you is about to be sued. Ain't that's about a damn bitch. Now the bald headed you is about to be sued. So we're on the same 21 day countdown. Now what 21 days means, okay? Is that, hold on, let me, let me get myself together here, okay? And I'm reading this from the law.cornell.education slash rules, blah, 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 blah. I'll leave the link in the description box, okay? Oh, yes. It says, in general, unless one, unless another time is specified by this rule or a federal statute, the time for serving a responsive pleading is as follows, okay, you guys? A defendant must serve an answer within 21 days after being served with the summons and complaint, or if it is or has been waived within 60 days after the request for a waiver was sent, okay? A party must serve an answer to a counterclaim or cross-claim within 21 days after being served with the pleading that states the counterclaim or cross-claim, okay? That party, being Mrs. Moore, must serve a reply to an answer within, within 21 days after being served with an order to reply unless the order, once again, spe specifies a different time, okay? Uh, that's pretty much it. He has to respond, okay, to 
this claim. And there are 30 quatrains <laughs> of fuckery he has to respond to specifically, which is why he would need a lawyer, okay, to be able to have the technical response to those claims, okay? He has to recognize this lawsuit. He has to register, okay? He has to enter into the system and acknowledge the claim, okay? If he does not, this defaults Larry to a judgment. And I'm gonna tell you, if you are somebody who actually wants to see some justice brought to your plight, in this case, this is by Larry suing FUPA, is giving FUPA the opportunity to let all that big boy shit that he's taught and all this um, fraud and molestation and all this shit that he's claimed, honey, this gives him, Larry pretty much paid the courts to give FUPA an opportunity, an opportunity to prove his plight. Uh-huh. So there's no reason why Daryl should be running, should be refusing to come to court, or should not respond within 20 days, because this is his big opportunity to make his supporters very proud. Mm -hmm. Now, if he doesn't respond in 21 days, and, well, yeah, if he doesn't respond in 21 days, the judgment is defaulted. Now, because I have seen this actually play out with my own ears and own eyes, I'm going to tell you what happened when when Mrs. Bartholomew McCray, Orenthal Rufus, Hezekiah Walker, is early bitch. McCray did not show up in court. And Bishop Matthews had a default judgment. When judges watch a defendant not only defy the law, which is what got them before the courts to begin with, but then also avoids accountability and confrontation from the courts, judges take that very seriously. And the way that's translated when a judge watches a defendant run away from accountability is they are very empathetic and show massive favor to the plaintiff. So if FUPA does not reply or register in 21 days, Larry Reed is going to default a judgment. And that means that the judge is more than likely going to give Larry what he's desiring and then some, because B Bishop Matthews got what he wanted and then some, okay? Okay, so you make... Matters worse for yourself when you're being ignorant and ratchet and using all of your horony ass uh 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 whole quotes and ideologies, okay? To have you stop, drop, and roll your ass away from the court. So it's gonna be pretty messed up. Oh yes. Now, Fupa did say one thing that I heard through the grapevine that was true. He said he doesn't have to show up in court. So if he actually uh, responds to uh, being process served. Oh, I didn't say this in the beginning. I have the official process service papers. They will be in the Patreon. I'm going to lightly refer to them here in this commentary. If you are in the Patreon, in about 30 minutes, you're going to see the process service papers for yourself. Um, if you are in the Patreon, then go ahead and get your ass there. And you will be afforded that along with Larry Reed's STD results, which I posted in order to debunk um, um, Larry having the package, which is a narrative that the A-team and Mrs. Moore were going to push before I put that fire out before they even, when they first hinted to it, okay? Which is why y'all never heard about the bullshit again. So all of that would be going in the Patreon, okay? So the actual process service papers are in the Patreon. And thank you all to all of the new Patreon members, okay? Now, going back to what I was saying, Fupamore said something that was true. He, he doesn't have to show up in court. If he actually responds to the 21-day uh, situation, and uh, he decides to be actively involved in this lawsuit um, and actually defend his bullshit, then he's right. They don't have to go to court. Larry doesn't have to go to court. Fupa doesn't have to go to court. Uh, 
unless the judge grants Larry what he wants, which is an actual trial. If this goes to, to actual trial, Fupa and Larry both will have to enter and see each other physically in court. If this does not go to trial, this means that basically the lawyers will fight it out in court. They will, you know, file the right motions. They will file the right paperwork. They will do all of the lead work, okay, which is really, once again, horrible for FUPA because FUPA is being sued for punitive damages um, along with Larry's court fees and attorney fees. And so obviously the longer that Larry has to retain a lawyer for this case, um, the higher <laughs> those legal fees and court fees get because it also costs money to file motions, okay? This stuff is not free. Nothing you do in a lawsuit is free. Everything is money from retaining your lawyers to your lawyers having to 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 fill out certain forms which the court charges from for fupa knows this which is why there's a big chance why he may not um actually respond to the lawsuit because he can't afford to between having to pay a lawyer and then having to also have that lawyer charge him to actually file certain things and to file for certain motions, which are all pricey, which is why them hoes over there got a whole motherfucking legal fund set up and they're going to need a fucking huge one, okay? Now, the little itty bitty followers over there claiming that they got his back, honey, um, ain't none of you hoes living well enough to have his back financially the way that he gonna need y'all to have his motherfucking back, okay? He's gonna have to also step up as a CNA. Like I said, he gonna have to sell that mount you know what I'm saying? Niggas need to see what that mount do. He gonna have to put a little, put a little price on that throat game, on that deep throat game. Okay, he gonna have to bend over, not willingly like he's been doing. Okay, but he gonna have to bend over and get that booty hole to niggas now. You know what I'm saying? With a price on it. Okay, he gonna have, he's gonna have to be parking lot thought 2.0 in this bitch. Okay, which is why I'm feeling my spidey senses. Interestingly, are telling me that Fupa. It's not going to respond. Mm -hmm. He can't afford to, literally. <laughs> not metaphorically, baby. But literally cannot afford to. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. So 21 days, he has to respond, okay? He's on his 20th day. So you guys keep keep, keep, keep remembering the countdown. 20 days. Tomorrow, it'll be 19. Sunday, it'll be 18, etc. Okay? Yes. Now, if it goes to trial... This is when shit is going to get really, really, really off the chain. This is when the shit going to get action-oriented for real, okay? It's going to be a lot of motherfucking moving parts if they go to trial, uh-huh. Um, like I said, it would be impossible for him to represent himself considering that he don't know shit about the goddamn law and they're over there using the goddamn dictionary and atlas, okay, to understand <laughs> this fucking lawsuit, girl. Mm-hmm. And you know what's also interesting? Um, T.I. recently spoke um, out in his new song, which I actually don't have here, but let me see if I can pull it up in this bitch, because a lot of people are now seeing the light regarding Miss Moore, and um, they're not comfortable with these accusers, you know what I'm saying? being so anonymous. And T.I. spoke to that in his new song. And I want to read those lyrics real quick because people have been talking about it, okay? He addresses what he, what him and his wife are going through, okay, with women that he alleges willingly pop molly, women who willingly submitted to sex, women who willingly participated, okay, in the bullshit. And uh, I want to see if I can get the lyrics here. Because I haven't even heard the song, but somebody told me about the song. Oh, yes. Have you guys heard the song? Have you guys heard T.I.'s new song addressing? Because you know Sabrina Peterson, who is leading this, 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 these allegations against T.I. and Tiny. Also, all of the victims, all 14 plus of the victims happen to be anonymous. Uh -huh. uh, which is really weird because when things go to court and go to, and go to trial... You're going to have to be out in the open any fucking way. So it's just really dumb. And all of these accusers, even though the first accuser is officially being sued along with FUPA, um, 
the second accusers too have brought themselves into proximity of this lawsuit. So all this conspiratory behavior, yeah, we know why y'all in secret, honey. But that won't save your ass from a lawsuit seeing that Larry actually knows who y'all all are. Dummies. Oh, God. This is what it comes to. Okay, that's the name of the song. T.I.'s song is called This Is What It Comes To. Um, My Wednesday night live was epic, you guys. It really broke this whole thing down. You guys need to watch that to really understand the psychology and the goddamn unclean spirits and demons and principalities that are residing over the situation with Larry. Okay, because it gives a very nuanced breakdown of how pain body and repressed sexuality and narcissism and empathic connection and dynamic to contrast. It's, 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 it's everything, child. People got their whole life. People was like, bitch, you need to be a goddamn lawyer, girl. I felt like I was listening to closing arguments in this, in this motherfucking um, in this commentary. It was epic. Let me put up the lyrics here. This is, this is what it comes to. This is what it comes to. Y'all niggas ain't on his level. Mm, Y'all niggas ain't on his level. It ain't on his level. Niggas ain't on his level. Mm. This is what. Okay, maybe I fucked up the name, honey. Y'all niggas ain't on his level. Okay, girl, maybe I missed it. Okay, I might not be able to uh, cite these lyrics. I wanted to cite the lyrics. Let me see. Let me go back in my damn. Go back in my situation. Go back in my situation. Y'all niggas ain't on here level. Because that same bitch you made for somebody else, your ass gonna fall in. Mm-hmm, true words, baby. That's Bible. Give me one second, you guys, to get these lyrics together. To, to see if I can pull them. If I can't pull them up, we're just gonna move forward. Oh, this is what it comes to. Okay. This is what it comes to. Okay, hold on, you guys. Just hold on. I mean, cause damn niggas ain't no here level. Mm. Y'all niggas ain't no here level. This is what it comes to. No, no, what y'all saying in the comment section. By law, you can't willingly consent to sex if you are drunk or high. But that's what that's what TI is. I don't know. I don't know like what they're going to do. Um, because they're gonna have to determine just how high or drunk. You know, popping a molly doesn't necessarily mean that your judgment is impaired to the extent that you can't make a conscious choice and they're going to have to wangle out all of that nuance. They're going to have to win all of that nuance, honey. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting in, in Kia's Nim case. This is what it comes to. Okay, well, I don't think they have a lyric sheet up right now. So I'm looking and I don't see shit. But nonetheless, he addresses it. And in the song, he talks about how, you know, all of these accusers, like, he basically demanding that they come into the light. You know, you making your claim stand in your motherfucking truth. You know what I'm saying? You claim this happened to, to you. So what you hiding for? What you hiding for? You came for a nigga and his wife who's in the light. So come to the light. Handle your shit. Stand in your shit. Y'all did all of this with no proof and only submitted written testimony to a person who ironically <laughs> that you know what I'm saying was friends with me and my wife up until this point I was I I was just babysitting her sons a few months ago she got pictures of me with her churn up on her page shouting me out is a great influence and uncle to her son so, you know, it's, once again, baby, there's another side to the Me Too movement, okay? It just is, okay? So now let's get into the next portion of the situation, honey, okay? Fupa, you got 21 days, girl. Either make good or don't make good. We'll be waiting and reporting. Once again, those papers will be in the 
Patreon. How not to get sued. I want to re-innovate what I said, okay? Look, none of us are absolved of accountability. Not even as um, commentators. None of us. No matter who we're commentating on, whether it be a real-life layman's persons or whether it be a celebrity, whether it be whomever, okay? Now, here's the thing about those of y'all who want to participate in the type of media that involves exposing folk, okay? Um, spilling folks' tea and all of that. <clears throat> you have to be dangerously, meticulously um, careful. First of all, you need to always use allegedly, which these folks never did. They sold all of this slander, all of this unsubstantiated slander, for almost two years regarding Larry and hell, other people, which is why you guys heard Miss Miko on Jives, on King Jives platform say they also are going to be pursuing. Okay. Some legal fight against the A team as well. This is what you open yourself to. Okay. When you're reckless as hell for a click in a damn view, okay? And you don't understand the do's and the damn don'ts. And you allow your impulse and your clout chasing ass antics to get the best of you. And then you end up ironically having to be inconvenienced in your life with all of these type of fucking shenanigans, okay? If somebody comes to you with no receipts, okay? And they have an interesting story to tell Okay, and you listen to them and some part of you feels like, you know what, this is true for whatever reason. It just compels you and you want to lend your platform to them. Perfectly fine. But the way you have to do that, especially when they don't have anything to substantiate their plight against alleged party. Okay, in order for you to avoid the suit, because a lot of times it's you who is the content creator who going to catch the motherfucking smoke. More than it is the random ass person who you're giving a platform to. You have to think about what's in the best interest of yourself as well. It's not just about um, a accuser. Okay? Your shit is on the line as well. I don't give a damn who coming to you about what. Okay? So you first and foremost need to uh, 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 preserve your damn self. And make sure that you are going to be able to do this without uh, uh, the consequences thereof. So somebody comes to you, tell you a compelling story about somebody, especially somebody in power, somebody mainstream, somebody who you know got the time and got the coin and got the resources, okay, to flip your damn titties up, your ass needs to have an understanding with that person and say, you know what, I'm going to give you my platform because I do believe you and I think it's an, it's an important conversation, but because... You don't have anything to substantiate your claim. And the little stuff you have presented is not substantiated enough. Okay? For me to let you get on here and do this. Because of the difference between antidotal evidence and empirical evidence. Your personal experience and what you claim happened to you is antidotal. You may know it's fucking true. Nobody else does because it's antidotal. It's kind of like the person in the room who, who sees a ghost. That's your damn experience. We don't know if you saw a ghost or fucking not. That's what you claim, though. Antidotal shit. Okay? Empirical evidence is factual actuality, okay? It's like finding a rock on the ground and being able to take that rock to everybody else so that they also can see and touch and agree that this is a damn rock you brought to me. Okay? Because empirical evidence is clear and it's blatant evidence, okay? Blatant evidence, right? Okay, so you can't take somebody who has empirical evidence, which is, I mean, can't take somebody who has antidotal evidence, which is circum circumstantial evidence, okay? Coupled with a testimony, okay? I claim to be there. I claim that this happened. I claim that this is what took place in the conversation. I claim this is what took place in the car. That's all antidotal. You can't do shit with that. 
okay? And that kind of shit will get you fucked up and get you sued. So this is what happens. I'm, I'm just gonna lay it out once again, okay? To all the newcomers and all the folk, all the new YouTubers who looking, who so desperate, honey, to build their platforms, and this is what y'all gonna do. This is how you do it. You can bring an old salacious bitch on who got an old salacious story to tell and to spill, but you better make sure that you don't let that bitch say the alleged person's name. OK, because if somebody came to me and I actually believe them, but they didn't have a lot to show for what they are alleging. And I wanted to bring them onto my platform. The only way that we could do that once again is with the understanding that I can let you tell your story, but you cannot actually state who this is. You can't drop a name. You can speak in general. You can say this is a real famous rapper. This is a real famous prophetess. This is, you know, somebody in, 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 you know, in the, in the acting world, da, 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 da. You can give very general descriptions, but you can't say anything that can specifically identify the person because I'm not going to get my ass fucked up and get my shit fucked up over something that may not even be true to begin with. Okay. We don't know these people who email us and come to us about what they claim happened. We don't know these folk from a canopy on the fucking wall. We don't know whether this is a clout, a clout chaser like um, Quantasia Sharpton, who alleged that Usher had given her a incurable STD. And three weeks into the investigation, her guilty conscience had her confess that she lied. OK, so we don't know if these motherfuckers are Quantasia Sharptons and Janice Dickerson, who also lied on Cosby and self-admittedly confessed that her story was bullshit. OK, we don't know. OK, that's why as content creators and folks with platforms and power and influence, we should vet those who come forward. Because we don't fucking know you. And there's too much on the fucking line to just allow any fucking body on to say any crazy fucking thing they can say out of their rabbit ass imagination. True or not. OK, because you got to understand that even if some shit is true and you can't fucking prove it, the consequences are the same. When they sue us, bitch. <laughs> Rather, what you said is true or not, motherfucker, we can't prove it. In fucking court. We can't fucking prove it. When these hoes come for us. Uh-huh. This is common sense. Okay? And this is why I was saying a few nights that Fupa asked, I can tell he's inexperienced. I can tell he leads from desperation. He leads from, 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 from being driven, okay? by the ratchet ass encouragement of his itty bitty followings because this is the most social acceptance he's ever had. He's not gonna let his supporters down because he attributes all of the rejection in his life to people not being impressed and him not being enough. And so the opportunity to have people support and believe in him, he's gonna do any take any desperate fucking measure to sustain people's belief in him because he's leading from a pain body. He's leading from trauma. He's leading from a spirit of rejection. And now all of that trauma and undealt with childhood shit has gotten your ass sued because you are here playing big boy games with a fucking pamper on. With a fucking pamper on. And now look at you. Now look at you. Now look at you. Because you are the you are the star of this lawsuit, not these accusers. So you allowed everybody else around you, Fupa, to be intelligent. You allowed Marcellus, okay, to shut down his platform and then to get on your shit and continue to fuck shit. Okay, while he put his car in a garage to avoid the repo man. You don't understand. Okay all of the weird usury that motherfuckers directly around you are doing all of the snake shit. No, you don't because you translate the fact that somebody's just next to you as them being your friends, as them being loyal to you. 
and you miss the motive and the context and the reason why they are, okay? Because mad cow disease in Florida Evans got a heavy ass pain body too. And I do mean literally all you bitches are big and funky. Big funky bitches, okay? Talking shit about folk who way cuter and way more attractive than y'all, okay? It's clear that none of you hoes actually live in an environment that has mirrors anywhere, okay? and got the mitigated gall to be coming superficially for folks' looks. Because even if the folk you were talking about were actually unattractive, bitch, they're more beautiful in their character and integrity than you hoes ever could be. That's what the gag really is. But you better get you some, okay? So not only have you allowed Marcellus to play and manipulate you by preserving his shit so that when you go down, Okay, which he's going down with you. So he also is under a false notion that this lawsuit is simply about you. And it's not. It's about the entirety of the A team, including these fucking accusers. Okay. Your whole little group is being sued. Okay. Because you are just the head starter in this situation. This is why there is a thing called subpoena. Okay. So that all of the flying monkeys who participated in conspiring along with your ratchet, wrong, illegal, criminal ass, okay, can be brought into the equation. So Larry doesn't even actually need to put them on notice, even though he's going to, because he just petty. <laughs> and he just likes direct motherfucking, he just likes direct contact like that, okay? But using you brings all of them into the equation. Mm -hmm. And see, if you actually cared about your little team, who was just made up of a bunch of church hurt, traumatized, left behind and rejected folk who are galvanizing under a pseudo um, purpose, okay, that y'all found purpose in each other. We're going to take the bad guys down. Uh-huh. So y'all all have a mutual purpose, okay, to substitute a genuine self-esteem and healing that you can proceed from rather than creating characters and personalities and false identities, okay? That have gotten y'all all now in some fuck shit because you're not being true to that own self, okay? Your whole team is comedy and is a parody. It's cringy, in fact, actually. But nonetheless, you allow Marcel, you like to shut his shit down to use your shit and then when your shit goes down, okay, guess what he's going to do? Faithfully reopen his motherfucking platform like Atlanta did, okay? <laughs> when it reopened the motherfucking city from COVID. Uh-huh. And he's ironically going to have all those videos about Larry removed and then proceed on with his commentary, bitch, while you are here having to pick up another shift, okay? So that you can pay off this bullshit or while you're in jail for six fucking months for doxing and trespassing because there's a criminal aspect wrapped up into this lawsuit, girl. You broke the law. You trespassed brandished weapons, okay? Threatened the life of somebody. And you did, you did, you put all those threats up, waved all those guns around before pulling up on him. That makes you that makes your motive and the probability of you actually being a real life threat to someone's safety real because you fought, because you gave life and substance to all those threats when you drove your ass from Ohio into Atlanta, Georgia. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So now, once again, look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Wailing around in the car, crying like a goddamn maniac. Everybody can see, bitch, that you pressed. And you even slipped up the other day when your audience was telling you to shut the fuck up, Daryl. Stop fucking talking. Do you see Larry fucking talking, nigga? Has Larry said a goddamn thing? Larry ain't uttered a fucking peep. He ain't, he ain't said shit about, he ain't even said, girl, he's suing nobody, and he has not said a damn thing. 
And your own, your own following is getting frustrated and saying, can you close your fucking mouth? And you slipped up and told them in your frustration and all of your insomnia and said, y'all ain't the ones being sued. I'm the one being sued. I'm the one who losing sleep. And then you caught yourself. You caught yourself. Because remember, you've been trying to maintain a narrative that Larry walked right into your trap. That's just what you wanted him to do, okay? You wanted to drive him to sue you, okay? So that you had an opportunity, okay, to present all your findings to the fucking court and finally bring him down, okay? That's, that's, that's been your cover story. But you fucked up as the truth always comes to the light if God is my witness. The truth always makes its way to the front door, just like Fufa Jr. did, okay? To receive yo, yo notice of, 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 of process. Yo notice of being sued, okay? Yo ass slipped up and told the damn truth. That you are losing sleep in a nervous motherfucking wreck and sweating harder than a hooker. Doing Easter motherfucking service at St. Baptist. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we know this. We knew this. Uh -huh. Anoya says, I've watched from afar. I've noticed the obsession with LRL, but where, but there were months of videos of videos on Andrea and the lady who drives called Sis Miss Miko. Yep. Uh -huh. But why would you be losing sleep, Daryl? You have said you got this thing in the bag. You have said, Oh, I can't wait for the discovery. The discovery. I can't wait for the discovery process. Yeah, we can't wait for it either, bitch. Uh-huh. Because Larry is as clean as a motherfucking whistle hole. Uh-huh. And all these people who've been, like, you know, uh, uh, stating that, you know, they've heard these things um, for years, that they've heard these rumors that people in North Carolina know what's up. Etc. Blah 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 blah. Um, that would make a lot of sense. Seeing that Larry been dealing with these disgruntled ass non-Christian folk way before y'all ever knew him as L R L. Okay. If you look at the date on the STD sheet that I'm going to post on my Patreon, yeah, those rumors were from 2013. He discovered. He was told about the rumor in 2014. The person who came to him had heard about the rumors in 2013 from the third accuser about the third accuser allegedly giving him, him giving the third accuser allegedly HIV. Larry been dealing with these hoes since they've been gone. So it would make a lot of sense if these rumors existed way back when. It didn't make him true then, and it don't make him true now. H Larry was HIV negative then, and he HIV negative now. Okay? So, do you realize what you're saying when you say you heard all this shit? All you really are attesting to is that these psychotic fucking bitches who need more than a little bit of Yahshua, but need some motherfucking medication and maybe some shock treatment, okay? Because them hoes is dark and dense. Dark and dense and wicked, just like the 18 is. Dark, dense, and wicked. God ain't in you. The truth ain't in you. You're just a freak of fucking nature. A fucking mutation of some sorts. But it would make sense why these rumors existed way back when. Because these people have been disgruntled way back when. They've been disgruntled since they all been evicted. And isn't it ironic that they all was kicked the fuck out? All kicked out. What's going on? I am back. Roxanne Roxanne isn't innocent either. Guilty? Yeah, they all are. But some of them are so irrelevant that they're not, <laughs> you know, that they're in the real peripheral of the situation. 
<clears throat> you know, Roxanne is supposed to be the self-appointed police officer on the A-team, okay? She's mistaken being a crossing guard for being a police officer, okay? Mm-hmm. Just like Fupa mistake being an educator with being a substitute teacher for being an actual educator. Uh-huh. Blessed Booked and Busy says, pull some things up here. EC-1.3, should a paralegal's fitness to practice be compromised by physical or mental illness causing the paralegal to commit an act that is indirect that is indirect violation of model code, model rules. What's funny about that blessed book and busy is that he was actually fired from the legal firm that he was shadowing when he was so caught studying, okay, for his exam that he claims he successfully had um, completed and got a certificate for. But if you call that same legal firm, they will tell you that he no longer is there. Uh, and that he was let go of, in fact, because when people found out, because he posted the school, I mean, the firm, he posted the school and people found out the firm that um, he was shadowing and people called that firm and told them that Fupa is a doxer, okay, that he uses private and personal, even governmental information to slander, to harass. He uses information illegally. Uh-huh. And they sent that that firm both his channels. Mm-hmm. To the motherfuck shit. And they let him go. The same thing happened to Let Me See Your Transcript last year. She had a part-time job working for an organization that was about basically combating um, racial injustice a nice, really, really, really nice older white woman leads this organization. And because Miss, let me see, your transcript was online with the fuck shit, participating in the doxing, participating in stalking and harassing and attempting to cyberbully people, okay? Folk, righteous folk did the same thing. They got in contact with Miss Kim Superiors. And they got in contact with her part time job, which was with this organization. They submitted, let me see your transcripts, videos as proof that she sits next to a maniac and that on her personal platform, she be with the fuck shit. And guess what? It took that sweet uh, white lady six days, okay, to review the findings and then to make contact with Miss Kimberly and to dismiss her from the organization because Kimberly's personal uh, 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 values and code of conduct contradicts what the organization stands for. And the little white lady was very shocked. She said, are we talking about the same person? Because the fake ass hoe, you know, all them fake as hell, all of them are dualistic. Okay, all of them suffer from disassociative personality disorder. So they play roles and characters, okay? And this little white lady just could not believe that fluffy ass um, two packs of Oreos devouring ass Kim was with the fuck shit. She couldn't believe it. She could not both leave it, honey. And yeah, had to dismiss her ass. And y'all remember last year <laughs> when Kim was going ballistic and Fupa had got on his platform talking about something had happened, you know, to Kim regarding one of her jobs that she was going through some things on one of her jobs and she was very upset, etc. <laughs> what you upset for? You really think that y'all going to be the ones out here harassing and stalking folk and people not going to return the, the favor. You really did not tell you hoes from the very jump of this, that everything y'all do, anybody can do. Y'all don't have no special powers. You don't have to be gifted to harass. You don't have to be gifted to fuck up people's businesses and livelihood. That don't take no damn gifting bitch. That just requires a choice to either do it or don't do it. That doesn't take no, no, no exceptional mutant ability. Okay? 
And people been returning the favor. Mm-hmm. Returning the favor. None of these folk wanted to go to court with Larry. None of the accusers, including Jimmy Battles, who was being mentioned in the comment section, who adamantly confessed and admitted that he didn't want this to really go beyond telling his story. Why would that be? So you want to come and trigger up an entire social media audience who can identify with the reality of sexual abuse and people in power abusing their power. And all you want to do is take the opportunity to sit before hundreds of thousands of people, potentially millions, only to talk about a famous person aloud. what 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 really is supposed to happen considering that people are not penalized by you simply stating that this person did this to me what 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 like it's almost like in engaging in some good love making knowing that there's not going to be a climax and it was just kind of like we just wasted a, a whole lot of good energy and time and effort and emotion and mental power for there not to be no payoff like what 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 really was the purpose it was unnecessary time spent at the goddamn jam like like if y'all y'all how is how is y'all narrative going to be being abused and traumatized and this is a public figure who you know is still coming into contact with other people, you would think that between you being abused, according to you, you knowing the reality of what this 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 popular person, this famous person is capable of, and the fact that they now, because they're even more famous now than they were then, have access to far more people now, which creates a bigger potential for victims, you would think there would be nothing short of logic that, that, that prompts you to decide to press the gas on said alleged person, if not for your sake, for other, for the potential of, of, uh, of other potential victims. How old are the accusers? All of them grown ass niggas now, all of them niggas over 30 now. Some of them niggas, the other two accusers weren't even underage at the time. They were adults, young adults, that they alleged this happened. Even the first accuser that people are um, narrating as being underage was 16, which is the age of consent in this country. So even that technically takes the first accuser out of the box as a underage person all these folk were young adults at the time that they alleged and accused larry as such and none of these folk have no fucking receipts only antidotal receipts and they all have stated that they have no interest in pursuing truth or justice regarding to this and then once again, out of all the people that you could go to, you went to Fupa Moore, who only has 3,500 subscribers, has 450 videos with 300 plus of them being about one man solely. What in the hell was the damn point? Y'all had Tasha K to go to. Y'all had lovely tea to go to. Y'all had successful bloggers who have large and massive reach to go to. And you went with a random unknown vlogger who has also ironically failed at assisting any other self-proclaimed victim on his platform, including Jenny Battles alike. Who has not done anything in a way that would have convinced me if I was a accuser 
that he is the man for the damn job. Oh, yeah, there are more coming, Montica. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's more coming. There sure is. Uh-huh. David says, if my calculations are right, all of them were 17 years old or older when they were alleging sexual combo or justice was made. This is calculated. Exactly. And guess what? 17. Age of consent. They were not underage. Okay? They all were evicted, ironically. And they all lived in homes. In the home with other families. Women, mothers, fathers. They were not alone with Larry. Larry was barely with any of them at the time that they lived in his house. Okay? And all of the other people who are going to contest and come forward. Yeah, because we got more than one motherfucking witness to this too. I told you with the first accuser alone, there were 11 interviews that got conducted. I only published two because I didn't want to run the bitch in the ground to that extent. I felt bad that this many people had this much negative set, this much negativity to say <laughs> about him. I didn't want to do him or his wife in like that. Mm -hmm. But there were people who lived with these accusers in Larry's home at the time. Uh-huh. And they can attest, Larry was not even there. 90% of the time. You, you got to really think about it. This man had multiple properties, had a entire ministry, and he had to fund it. So why would the hell would he be home flashing his goddamn dick and having all this goddamn time to sexually abuse folk when there's a big motherfucking tab that his ass had to pay for all the shit he was providing for families and refuge. So of course the nigga was on the damn road all the time. Of course he was in London and out of, out of the state, out of the fucking country because bills had to be motherfucking paid. These niggas literally, net, literally, Barely had a relationship to Larry, even while living in his home, who Larry was barely fucking occupying. Because everything in the ministry was ultimately being funded by Larry. Anna says, because those large bloggers are going to do their due. Amen. A. Let's put it up here because those large bloggers are going to do their due diligence. And if the stories weren't rock solid, <clears throat> they wouldn't do the story. Miss Moore doesn't have the same, <laughs> the same degree of integrity. Okay. And it, that's why I say and it, you can tell he's a novice and he's immature and inexperienced and just dumb, just damn dumb. Dumb enough to get your ass sued on a fucking federal level, okay? You talking about pleading fucking insanity and filing for fucking bank. <laughs> like, all and all over what? 3,500 fucking subscribers? You put yourself on the line for motherfuckers who didn't even want to go to court themselves? And now you done ended it. How you help? How you giving people to... How you giving folk a platform to speak their truth on who don't want no legal smoke? And you done fucked around. <laughs> and inherited the court system that they should have been fucking inheriting since this is their motherfucking abuse since since larry is their villain not yours fufa you're just exploiting these fucking stories you're just exploiting these fucking accusers because the first thing that you should have said to them motherfuckers is hold up homeboy we ain't got nothing to talk about then i mean y'all ain't trying to do shit he supposed to be y'all big bad boogeyman underneath the motherfucking bed in the motherfucking closet. But y'all want him to live freely. Y'all want him to be wealthy and rich and have access to even more individuals and let him get away with this. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense to me. So y'all want to come and talk about a villain and y'all stories would be integral. Y'all alleged experiences would be integral 
to taking this man down and you're not going to use the one bullet in your fucking gun you have to not only bring him to justice for you, but to also keep him out of this world away from other potential victims. No. And you don't question, you don't, you don't, how don't you register that? Like, how don't you go sit back and say, okay, there's something ain't right in the fucking buttermilk. On top of you hoes wanting to be anonymous. On top of you hoes not wanting to do a goddamn thing about who y'all say is a damn monster. Girl, I'm trying to make, hey, Miss Miko, what's going on, boo? How you make it make sense? Let me see what, what Miss Miko said. Good morning to you, baby. You done said something. I was trying to find this so I can highlight it. Um, let me read some of these things. Uh, six more accusers. Daryl is paying to lie. Right, because we have proof that Daryl um, offered to pay people to come forward about Larry. So that's another aspect of the shit that just, once again, just discredits the whole thing. Really. So you want to... So how you going to openly... First of all, you wouldn't have to pay any genuine victim to talk about their fucking abuse, bitch. You're not Diane Sawyer. Telling their truth on your platform doesn't equate to shit. But what, 6,000 fucking views? 19, if that. And that's not even due to the story itself being interesting. That's due to you uh, 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 trying to overwhelm the algorithm system by consistently talking about one person, which puts your content next to theirs in the algorithm system, making you findable when people go to find Larry Reed. And then that requires you to do what you've been doing, which is like ambush self-promoting, which is jumping into Earl fucked out Carter stream, jumping into every motherfucking mainstream vlogger stream to fucking self-promote yourself like you was doing in my Patreon early on, like you was doing in King Jive's Patreon early on, like you was doing on Larry Reed's platform early on, girl, because these views are self, they are self-manufactured. You use, your premium gas is your desperation. That's why you even get some of these videos sometimes to hit a good 15, 16K. Nobody cares. Nobody's listening. And you're working and stepping in front of people who don't even care to do shit about a fucking abuser. So what does that say about them? Because real victims of abuse who don't want to um do anything regarding their perpetrator are not even taken to a public platform to talk about it specifically because they're not ready for that going through that would remind them of everything that happened and they don't even want to do that to themselves and the only real victims of abuse who are ready to press the gas are going to use social media as a compliment to the legal system they either already have aligned with or are going to utilize to bring their assailant to justice, okay? None of those things are happening in your case with none of these motherfuckers, Oofa. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, vendetta. Shit, deeper than that, mental illness. These people are sick. These people have some issues. And they were all kicked out because they had issues then. They were troubled youth. You know, the type of youth that ends up in DJJ, the type of youth that right now is sitting in mental health facilities, the type of youth. Yeah. These 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 individuals were were out of hand now. That's why they had to be dismissed. You know, after they became men and everything, you know, it was water under under the bridge as far as Larry was concerned. So he didn't mind hanging on to some loose association to them once they grew up and got the fuck away from him. 
time had done passed. Y'all already know that Larry S is a forgiven person. That's why he even recently, you know, allowed King Jives to, to, you know, to come to him and to make amends. And he accepted that. That's why he allowed Andrea Garrison to make amends. Larry is very, very forgiven. Even if you've been a clear and direct opponent to him, even if you made your motives clear, Larry is not somebody who really holds on to grudge. He will distance himself from it, but he's not really holding anything in his fucking heart. Mm -hmm. Now, what the hell is David saying? Because David got it going on. Let me scroll up to David. It definitely escalated after that song, although it started in November 19, according to the comment section. I don't even know what the hell David is. Let me see if I can get to the front of the line with David's comments before I get out of here. Y'all been commenting it up, I can see. That is clear. He has pre-trial transcripts that only a lawyer can get. That's how he knows. Right. Now, that is true. Yeah. And I I know exactly which lawyer he got that from. And, and, and if this thing goes to trial... When they go to subpoena all of that goddamn, all of his devices and emails, they're going to reveal, okay, who Mrs. Moore has been communicating in the background of things. During those years, he had churches in other countries. I was already gone, but I watched from afar after I left and came out. I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up. If my calculations are right, all of them were seven. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, Fupa is truly mental, mentally unstable. Bring his mama and daddy in to testify against their son. First of all, Fupa can't do that, Melissa. That's been another thing. Um, Daryl can't subpoena anyone. The judge has to subpoena a person and has to subpoena based upon uh reasonability right like it has to make sense daryl does not get to walk into court and says um bring in larry's dad bring in Larry. that's not how subpoena works subpoenas are granted by the judge and why bringing a person into the equation has to be clear and make sense and has to directly pertain okay to the case that involves so daryl don't get to subpoena no fucking body and sub and to subpoena someone because <laughs> this is the gag, right? You only subpoena people who 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 can vouch for your plight. That wouldn't be Larry's parents. That wouldn't be Larry's support hers if anything you're going to subpoena those who also are alleging right this see so what actually would happen is fupa would have to subpoena us he would have to force the accusers out into the open directly into the court system You, you can't subpoena Larry's support. That's a waste of fucking time. What you would have to do, Fupa, is subpoena the accusers. Because they are the ones who are the authors of these allegations. They're the ones who claim that these things happened and that Larry did these things to him. You're stupid, sir. You're stupid, Mr. Moore. Okay, I think y'all talking about uh, the T.I. song. Exactly. This is what exactly. This is what he was saying to his followers. He told that Larry parents talking about his mom was working in the yard in a dress. Why are you watching her? Which he didn't even get that from somebody who viewed her. He got that from Larry's mom in an interview she did with her son on Mother's Day stating that she loves being in her yard and that she's a gardener. This is something that she's known in her community for. And there are pictures of her on her own private social media pages 
or at least there were, okay, before uh, Mrs. Moore, okay, presented himself as somebody who was stalking the living shit out of everybody in Larry's camp, okay? So, Fupa takes, like, information provided by people themselves, and then he co it because, you know, you haven't heard it. You know, you probably didn't watch the fucking interview on Mother's Day with Larry's mom. And then he presents that information that people re reveal about themselves and, and act like it's his personal intel. Act like he either was the one spying and saw her in her garden or that people close to the family, okay, are working with him. Because once again, this goes back to the video I did yesterday. I mean, Wednesday, where I talk about intimidation tactics. Fupa, because he's a malignant narcissist, likes to try to incite paranoia in people, which is why he pulled up to Larry's house and took pictures with no intention of knocking on the goddamn door and ringing the goddamn bell and saying, hi, honey, I'm home. Mm-mm. Fupa crazy. The nigga ain't insane. He plays mental games, okay? He's all bark, no motherfucking bite. He relies on shock value and lying and the distortion and misrepresentation of truth and information. This is his way. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Mad cow disease, honey, with her chrome, her chrome. Her motherfucking chrome um, um, tablet. Oh, yes. Casey says, right in the side, I'm the David person. Kamal says, I don't believe them and shouldn't. It ain't nothing there to fucking believe. Carolina says, when he pulled up to the house, would have paid him down. See, ironically, Larry was actually out of town. The family wasn't even at the house. Miss Moore knew this, which is the only reason why Miss Moore scheduled to be at the house. <laughs> family was out of town. I mean, Larry was out of town. Ms. Miko says the allegations has nothing to do with Fupa being sued. Exactly. Fupa is being sued for his own conduct. Him facilitating uh, these fake ass accusers is just like one little aspect of what Fupa is overall being sued for, which is why if you actually read the fucking lawsuit claim, which is public and in my Patreon, it's, it's public on pacer.gov. Anybody can go pull it up with the case number or read it in my goddamn Patreon. That's why you see a plethora of things listed in the lawsuit. You hear the mention of accusations of FUPA accusing him. Hold on. Let me, y'all about to make me, let me pull up the paperwork for you. Okay. Let, let me remind, you know, for the bitches in the bike. Okay. Cause I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. Like people see the shit. All right, looking at the shit for themselves and still like trying to re narrate. Okay. Let me see. Hold on. Give me one second. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see here. Okay. Yep. This is the perfect one. Let me share my motherfucking screen real quick. Okay. Cause we're going to do this for the dumb bitches in the back and then we're going to bounce. Let me share. Oh, I, I got to stop sharing this fucking picture of the A team. Hold on. Let me stop this. Y'all niggas ain't no him level. You ain't here. Y'all ain't even on CTV level, bitch, yet alone Larry's level. Y'all niggas ain't on him level. Mm, Y'all niggas ain't on him level. Mm -mm. Y'all niggas ain't on him level. Okay. Let me share, let me share, let me share, Chrome. Y'all niggas ain't on here level. Okay, you, you see here? Where I am putting my, um, let's zoom in, honey. Okay, let me blow. Hold on, can I blow this up? Okay, it might get a little disordered because I am zooming in. But let's read this area over here. Okay, this is the case number, you guys, okay? For all the dumb holes in the back, okay? Go look at it for yourself. Stop listening. Like, girl, you cannot take Daryl Moore's word when the actual suit is explaining itself, okay? Right here, Quatrain 3. In rambling videos and live video streams that sometimes exceed two hours in length, 
Mrs. Moore has repeatedly defamed Reed, falsely accused him of crimes ranging from tax fraud to child molestation, expressed his desire to kill him, threatened to track Reed down at his Atlanta home, a threat on which Moore made good on when he pulled around into Larry's front yard and not only uh, photographed himself, but did an entire video he posted to his Buy Me A Coffee uh, subscription-based page, okay? Had a whole conversation in front of Larry's home and urged Reed subscribers directly and through innuendo to unsubscribe from the video cast, okay? So here you heard everything FUPA, okay? It's gonna have to deal with in federal court, okay? Along with the accusations of him being a child molester, along with FUPA and his threats, okay? Brandishing of a weapon, all those things are in the claim. Along with him trespassing onto Larry's uh, property, along with everything FUPA has said from Larry committing tax evasion, okay, tax fraud. It's, I mean, it goes on and on and on. So how the fuck are these hoes confused? I don't understand. Are folk not, not, not? <laughs> are you okay? FUPA is not going to fucking court simply on behalf of these fucking victims. That's just one of, of, of 12 things that this bitch is being summoned forth and being held accountable for his entire behavior and conduct toward Larry D. Reed is what he's being held accountable for. And him bringing on these accusers who don't have a shot in hell of being able to substantiate the shit they claim, okay? Just only added insult to injury with somebody who is a whole criminal on paper. And to couple that with the fact that Daryl's um, record has been expunged. But guess what? People had access to that record before it was sponged. So we know what's in Daryl's original criminal background, okay? And even though it's been expunged on the front end, as far as anybody who would employ Mrs. Moore will not see that record, we're talking about federal court and the whole entire truth <coughs> is always used to contest or to verify, et cetera. <coughs> so the courts are going to be able to use FUPA's actual criminal past as a foundation to set for his violent, Criminal behavior online, doxing, slander, both cyber and physical harassment. FUPA is both a digital terrorist and a physical one. What's going on, the viewers of you? All documented. Truth Speaks says FUPA is not replying accusers in this trial he has to rep himself and his crimes right he's not defending the accusers bitch y'all y'all are <laughs> i mean but this is why i say it's comedy y'all i feel so bad for, i mean it's just like i've it's like i've never seen impressive stupidity i i i don't understand i and you know what i don't try to this is real life this is happening in real life these are real life court papers. This is a real life lawsuit. It's explaining itself. So nobody can say anything less or anything more because it's all literally painted right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, impressively stupid. This is how the A-team looks. Let's never forget that this is the A-Team right here, wrapped up in all of their glory. This is Mrs. Moore in her original form, okay? This is her original body. This is the original sin. 
Okay. It's Mr. Pillsbury Doughboy. Okay. This is before the botched gastric bypass surgery. This is Florida Evans, a.k.a. Mrs. Sh Sh Chandler, a.k.a. Let me see the weight on the scale, okay? And all of her natural glory and, you know, her douse of red lipstick here. You know, super close up on the camera. Scaring the children with this goddamn midnight body. Once again, Miss Kimberly, you and Daryl have a midnight body. Y'all are not daywalkers, bitch. Y'all need to do videos in the dark. You need to have a profile picture up, bitch. You're spooking the horses. Uh-huh. And then here is Mrs. Macmillan, honey. Mrs. Mad Cow Disease. Uh-huh. Here. You know, doing corporate work upstairs of the Amazon warehouse with her Chrome tablet that she needed her supporters to fund for her because initially she wanted a Generation 7000 Apple iPad, okay? Because, but because these people don't get no support financially. They don't get no support from their subbies, okay? He had to settle for the $60 that was donated, okay? To get him a Chrome tablet after claiming that he's a six-figure type of a bitch. If six figures equates to having six ones, if it equates to having six $10 bills, you know, that $60 that you able to use to go to eBay to find you a refurbished Chrome tablet? Oh, yes. You are indeed a six-figure bitch. I won't take that from you, sugar. Right, Miss Miko? No one should ever take YouTube that far. Let this be a lesson learned. And it won't be because, you know, narcissists never learn. What what happened is Daryl would go into obscurity because he will legally be restrained from being able to clout chase off of Larry D. Reed ever again, along with the rest of the A team. And all he'll do is sit around, be more anonymous, and find him another victim. Because that's all narcissists do is transfer victims until somebody fucks around. And takes their ass clean out. Okay. I bet Marcel you liked. Won't be flying. Into court every time Daryl. Of course not. Never. Never. The fallout between Marcel you like and Fupa is going to be epic. It's coming. Everybody who the people ever came into contact with. Has fallen away from them. Has fallen away from them. The, the only reason these three friendships has lasted is because they're all equally dense. They are all equally of the same energy. So it magnetizes itself to get it magnetizes itself together properly. What a friend we have in Marcel us out. <laughs> Period. Okay. Close your mouth, honey. Close your mouth, Miss Kim. Of course, they will not televise the breakup, no. And they're also not going to televise the judgment either. <laughs> they're not going to televise the injunction either. They're not going to televise FUPA's platforms all coming down and his fucking suspension and fucking um, eviction and his goddamn ban from the internet. Oh, no. Uh-huh. And guess what? Now that Larry D. Reed has set a president suing these motherfuckers. So many other people, like Umar Johnson, who plans on suing Kimberly Chandler, uh-huh, and all the other people who have been cyber bullied by this crew. Yeah. Now he set the stage and the blueprint for anybody else who needs to hold this team accountable for they fuck shit. You have a real case on your hands. And there's justice out there for you to go get. If you've been victimized by any of these goddamn people. And on this last note, somebody commented yesterday and said, sweetie, I want to know. Well, they said something. Let me see. Because, you know, I like I like I like looking dead at bitches. That's what I like doing. Let me see if I can just pull it up. Let me pull up my YouTube channel because somebody made a comment. 
and I was gonna respond, but I said, you know what, girl, if you if if you have missed this whole train, you ain't even worth getting on it. So if you if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. So I didn't even bother. Uh huh. I didn't even bother explaining myself. But uh, you know, once again, for the new bitches in the back, for the folk who just jumping in and don't know what the hell going on, instead of asking questions, why don't you just actually do the research, girl? Just scrummage through people's channels, girl. Like all everything is here. Everything has happened here. I believe it was on this video. Y'all niggas ain't on her level. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't. Y'all niggas ain't on my level. Mm, Y'all niggas ain't on my level. You ain't on my level. You ain't on my level. You ain't on my level. Let me see. Let me see and pull up my my notifications. It's going to take me right to... Her comment. Y'all niggas ain't on my level. Okay, yeah, from Jessica Adger. She said yesterday under the video titled, Daryl Moore, a.k.a. the cigar blogger, has opened the door, has 21 days to respond. If you guys want to... Feel, you know, it, 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 if you guys want to help Jessica out, that's where her comment is. Her name is Jessica Adler. Let me see if I can share the screen. Let me move the A team out the way, girl. You know what? Y'all niggas ain't on my level. It's too early for, for my ass to be on the internet. That's why I'm fucking fucking up the screen sharing and shit. But nonetheless, I was going to show up. I'm just going to speak to it. This is for Jessica, okay? Jessica said, you know, this seems personal to me. And I said, yes, okay? I don't know how long you've been around, but it's clear it hasn't been long. Um... But yeah, of course, this is personal for me. Because once again, this doesn't just involve someone that I know. And it just isn't that all the evidence presented is not actual evidence at all. But this group of people tried to come for me because they couldn't recruit me. And, and, and because they were unable to recruit me for the hack for the Larry hate train, okay? That some folk got aboard, okay? They got disgruntled. And Mrs. Moore attempted to dox me by presenting what he, by telling the folk what he thought was my home and my address and all this type of shit, okay? He talked shit. He doctored up images, honey. He presented images of folk that wasn't even fucking me. I mean, all type of shit. Just talk shit. And I never did shit to this bitch. Never dragged this bitch. Never read this bitch. Okay. Nothing. And these folk have went on and on and on and on and on. That's why I played the video of me dragging Mrs. Um, Florida Evans back in May of 2020 to show you how long these hoes have had my name as well in their fucking mouth. Mm-hmm. But see... The only reason why I haven't taken as much of a beating by the A-team is because the A-team is aware that it's hard to really keep your foot on the neck of a bitch who don't give a fuck. It's very clear that CTV lives out loud. It's very clear that CTV is very comfortable with who he is. I don't hide who I am. I present who I am. Weaves, wigs, makeup, and all, bitch, I present it. Sexuality, spirituality, witchery, and all, bitch. Gay and all, bitch. And so when you are an authentic person, it's hard to be bullied. When you are an authentic person, it's hard for a bully to bully you. Because you own too much of who the fuck you are. You're way too comfortable and proud and confident in who the fuck you are for you to really be a target for fucking bullying. And so it's been hard for them hoes. And this is why people have forgotten that these hoes have talked shit about me too. 
because I've been the bitch out of everybody who they've probably talked about the fucking less, but nonetheless came for, in fact. Because, see, they didn't know then what they know now. Okay? Is that, first of all, bitch, I'm an expert, proficient, dragger, reader, and motherfucking roaster. I'm an intellectual on top of a metaphysician, and I'm a bitch who don't give a fuck. So what do you have when you couple all that together, which is absolutely fucking nothing? Nothing. Nothing. I debunked them hoes earlier on when I dragged Miss Kimberly because, see, even me dragging her rather than dragging Fupa was strategic. See, I study my opponents. I study how they work and how they tick tock. And, see, Fupa was trying to fuck with me because what he wanted was to absorb the the attention that I, that I would have gave to him by addressing him so he can transmute that and turn it into premium gas for his fuckery because that's what he does, feeds off attention. And when God allowed me to discern this about this opponent, I said, you know what? It'll be more. Um, it'll hit him more if I torture the people around his ass because see, he wants me to look him dead in his eyes. That's why I'm going to come for Kim instead. I'm going to hit him where the fuck it hurts because he, he can't do nothing with that energy because that energy is for Kim and Kim don't transmit energy. She don't transmute energy. She just follows Daryl because she wants the dick. But see, she's too big for the dick, okay? Daryl knows he ain't got enough meat and girth to sustain the weight of Kimberly's cow pussy alone sitting on him. Okay, and I dragged that whole nonstop without taking a breath as I have did all week long. And then do you know what happens? Fupa ass got so infuriated, just like I was counting on. That bitch got so pressed because I directed my attention to Kim rather than to him, which is what he was banking on. Okay, when he was poking around and that bitch went live for three hours in a very poor attempt to make me the butt of a joke. I literally had people, because he went live that night. Oh, I'm going to get you, boy. I'm going to get you, boy. Oh, I'm a, oh, you done did it now, boy. I'm going to get you now, boy. And this sorry crescent moon face bitch went live that night because that dragging against Kim, baby, was so vicious, so malicious. It was so truth-telling, bitch. It was so raw and real, girl, that that motherfucking sagging face, bad body bitch went live for three hours claiming he was a comedian <laughs> and attempted to drag me. And people were still waiting on the laughter. The laughter never came. Which is why these people rely on doxing this is why they rely on slander because they don't have the gift of gab. They can't compete where they can't compare. See, I don't need to dox, bitch. God gave me a mouth and a creative mind. I'm a Scorpio. I don't have to dox nobody. I ain't got to stalk nobody. I ain't got to harass nobody. And I ain't got to do 50 million 11 videos about a bitch, which is why y'all didn't see no content from me about them bitches for a year and a half up until now. Because now we got a court case that I'm going to cover. Uh-huh, because this is the victory, baby. This is the victory march, okay? This is the march to Washington in this motherfucker, okay? Mm-hmm. See, I said to my opponents, when I know you want my attention, bitch, that's when I'm going to not give it to you. If, if you ever want CTV to respond, bitch, um, and I know it's, it's you wanting my attention, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get it until I can really, really do something that's going to mean something to me. And so now the 18 being sued, <laughs> baby, you can get my attention for the next 21 days, girl, proudly, happily, because there's going to be tangible consequences and repercussions, okay? This is not vain, you know, tomato throwing. This is not getting up here and arguing with a bitch and tit for tat and video for video, girl. We're going to report the case, and we're going to march to victory. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, even Miss Miko. 
when she responded, she responded with parodies, with comedy. Didn't have to dox, didn't have to do nothing. And they can never take what they dish out because so far, FUPA has tried to privacy strike two of my videos that YouTube has completely fucking ignored because I know how to do this. I know what actually violates the community guidelines and what actually fucking doesn't, okay? I, this, this is why I don't even use these hoes real pictures because that's strikeable. Now, Daryl has pictures of everybody up there, okay? So imagine what would happen if Miss Miko, King Jobs, Larry, or myself, or Andrea decided to go through FUPA's catalogs of videos. There is so much shit on his platform alone. And also the A-teams. That is strikeable from privacy violations to copyright infringement. I mean, the likes. See, I don't use these bitches' content. Even when I have to use images of them, <laughs> I don't use their actual images. It's not necessary. See, when you're actually talented, girl, you don't have to result to shit that ultimately uh, brings you to self-sabotage. I've worked too hard to give my platform up for the fucking A-team. Are you serious? Do you really think I came this far? I've been on YouTube doing my thing, putting my work and energy in to get to 21 plus and counting. And you think I did all that to put my fucking channel in in jeopardy? But see, that's the difference between us and the A-team. The A-team don't have nothing to lose. This is why they sabotage everything. Clearly, their lives aren't even worth holding on. Because let me tell you something about um, Daryl's son, Fupa Jr. You know, Daryl, this really speaks to your level of narcissism and it proves the plight that I have been stating consistently um, in my reporting of this case for a whole month now, which is that you are a narcissist and you don't care about anybody but yourself. You don't care about these victims. You don't care about yourself. And it's clear you don't care about Fupa Jr. Because the reason why Fupa Jr. turned your ass in and went to that goddamn door and answered it for the process server and served you on behalf of the Ohio federal court is because he must be sitting inside of himself completely and utterly disappointed in his father that his dad would put himself in a position to have his life altered in really dramatic ways and open himself to the possibility of going to jail or being put away in a fucking mental ward somewhere or even the way that this injunction and this garnishing of wages is going to impact the lifestyle and livelihood of his dad. That his son must be sitting back and say, if you could not have not did this for yourself, how in the fuck could you have not at least not did this for me? Because you're putting yourself in a position as my dad to be removed from my life. You're putting yourself in a position if, if, if the judge, when the judge goes to show favor to Larry and grants this injunction and this judgment on you, dad, Do you realize between you having to pick up more hours and having to have your money split in 50 million eleven directions, that it means that you're going to be able to be less financially also available to me. It also means that more of your time is going to have to go into making money and working versus you being able to be present for me as your son. That there's nothing you can do as my father that doesn't directly impact me. And it goes to show that even Daryl doesn't give a fuck about being a dad. Because the biggest question of it all is how in the fuck could you do this to your son? How could you put y'all lives and livelihood in jeopardy? How could you do that to yourself as a man? It would be very different if Fupa was a, was, was, was a single person. You know what I'm saying? His, his choices don't impact nobody but himself. You got a whole fucking son that God expects you to protect and to be there for. 
and you are abandoning him in your obsession with Larry to the point that you was even willing to misrepresent your character as a father by pulling Fupa Jr. into this. Fupa Jr. has been in videos, have been in cars, have been in the basement while his dad was on the fuck shit. Fupa Jr. even followed in his dad's path and participated in the fuckery as a troll. I've had to block that bitch off my channel. You just trash it and classless, Fupa. Just deplorable and ignorant and stupid. And everything that's coming and everything that has came you deserve and you don't have nobody but to blame but your sorry ass your own sorry ass nigga you have to blame david said i didn't know a defamation suit could be filed for federal court until the story i had to google it uh-huh i'm glad you were enlightened because what makes it uh federal is the fact that the punitive damages and the lawyer fees equate to over seventy-five thousand dollars okay that's explained in the claim that's why it's on a federal level okay any damages that are less than seventy five thousand dollars like this is why there's a difference between small claims court that can only grant five thousand dollars okay things have to go to a federal level because you're talking about big money and you're talking about big consequences okay including criminal ones to get someone Mm-hmm. Fupa Jr. has me weak. It's true tea. True tea, no more stormy clouds. Instead of him creating content as a filmmaker, instead of a bullying, shaking my head, he done messed up his motherfucking life. Oh, yes. David, you don't have to Google anything. It's all in the paperwork, sugar. Like... <laughs> I like I I I don't understand. You know, like I, I just don't how you how y'all you can't follow but not listen. You know what I'm saying? The the facts are being presented and it's all in the facts. This is not difficult. This does not require some high level education. Like this is very comprehensible, you know, comprehensible stuff we're talking here because it's all laid out. You could see how embarrassed. Let me go up. Let me go up and read something coming before I bounce, y'all, because I'm gonna have a good Friday. Oh yes. Um, Ray says you could see how embarrassed Fupa was sitting in the car with Fupa Junior. Yep. Classy says, uh, the care Fupa is being federally sued. All is documented. Yes. Anybody who, yeah, like just Google it. Oh, look at the fucking paperwork. It's right. It's right fucking there. It's this weird. This lawsuit is going to be epic because it's going to vindicate Miss Miko Jobs and CTV. Yes, and Andrea Garrison and all those. Yeah, and all those folks clicking the video. And this is why I'm reporting it. So when people ask me, okay, girl, like, um, you seem to be real close up on the situation. Yeah, bitch, because I, I was a, I was, um, I saw this in its inception. I was there for the genesis of how all this shit came about. I'm a part of the original cast, okay? All them new little hoes they got over there getting online, all them hoes are new. You know, all them crackheads over there are new and shit, okay? I've been around from the beginning, okay? Saw it all unfold from the beginning, okay? They tried to turn me against Larry early on in the situation, okay? It wasn't no evidence then, okay? People got upset at me for being loyal to Larry. And, you know, people caught themselves trying to warn me on CTV. Uh, 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 you know, you know, uh, you might want to get away. Get away from. Shut up, Daryl. Who the hell people need to be getting away from is your ass, bitch. That's why so many people got away from your ass. Andrea Garrison, Miss Miko, and Jives, baby. You the bitch who folk need to be getting away from, bitch, okay? Because everybody around Larry love Larry. The, the the people around you don't love you. They use you. They exploit you. Okay? That's why Miss Miss Cellulite, honey, 
then shut her shit down, girl, and left your shit to be destroyed, girl. Marseille, like, parked his motherfucking cops and said, bitch, I'm going to drive your shit wild and crazy and reckless, girl. And then when we total lost your shit, bitch, I'm going to have the luxury, girl, of pulling up my garage and pulling my shit back out and driving safely, bitch. Because I would never do to my shit what I'm willing to do to your shit, bitch. Daryl, you better get put up on game, bitch. You better get put up on game, bitch. You better keep you. You better get up on game, Miss Hunty, Miss Miss Cunty Stunty. You better get up on game, bitch, and get up off them dicks and get up on some game, bitch. Okay, because the girls they playing with your kitty cat, bitch, and you you and you don't get it. You don't get it, Miss Stunty Cunty. Mm -mm. You don't get it, Miss Ma'am. And it's already about too late. Okay, girl, if you, ain't, if you ain't woke up now to all of these dynamics, it means you're never going to wake up, girl. You're just in the goddamn sunken place, okay? What's going on, King? King is in the motherfucking building, honey. And we, how you pull up in here late, King? We at the fucking end of our goddamn commentary, okay? I had to come up here and tell the people what it means for Daryl to be, you know, what he got to do in 21 days from now. He got, well, he got 20 days now. This is 21 days officially started yesterday. Today will make day 20. Tomorrow, 19. And I had to tell that bitch once again how not to, not, not him, but tell all these new hoes, okay, who want to specialize in dripping and tilting and spilling the tea on other people, how not to get sued, okay? There's an integral way to spill tea, and then there's the FUPA way of spilling tea, okay? So you got the FUPA plan, which is $3.99, girl. Included in that free 99 plan are defamation lawsuits, restraining orders on your ass, garnished motherfucking wages, in goddamn junctions, okay? PIs and investigators banging on your goddamn dough every day to motherfucking process served you, girl, in the life of hell if you want to take the FUPA plan when it comes to being the type of com the, the type of commentator, okay? Who is going to be talking and spilling the tea on the girls. Or you can actually follow suit, okay, with CTV plan, okay? I spilled the tea on Miss McCray, honey. I got to avoid all legalities, girl, okay? King Jobs has a long history, okay, of bringing forth victims and accusers onto his platform and avoiding mm -hmm, lawsuits. There's a way to do this. Mm-hmm. Even Larry, in his own situation with uh, 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 E. Dewey, he did a video saying, titled, How Not to Get Sued Like Me, telling you what to learn from his own experience, okay? Of when you get too caught up in belief in a victim without properly vetting a victim, but when you also get manipulated, Okay, by those involved, okay, because that whole situation with Larry and he do it with the fucking setup talking about he want to hire Larry to be an image consultant just to get his ass ultimately to sign a contract that gagged him so that Larry couldn't be uh, a source of media that could provide any information and coverage and commentary on any of the goddamn shit that was leaking out of the House of Hopes uh, 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 church doors. Yeah, man, these so-called folk, they get manipulative, baby. As content creators, you have to be smart, intelligent, understand what you're doing, okay? The reason why a, a, a lot of content creators are reckless and wild as hell is because they're not used to seeing accountability be had. But never think that you won't be the exception, bitch, because I can tell you right now, Fupa in a million years never thought that he would actually be sued for all the bullshit he does on YouTube. He never thought there would really come a day where he would have to answer, girl. He thought he was going to be able to do what, they, what he saw so many do before him, which is just do them to any extent. But he became the exception to the rule. And any of you bitches can become an exception to the rule, too. So you better take heed and take note and do things right and properly vet accusers. And if an accuser come to you practically receiptless, bitch, but you still want to give that whole your platform, you can do that. But you better make sure when you do that, bitch, that you don't allow that motherfucker to say 
the person's name and to identify the person who they accuse them because they don't have anything substantial to back it up which back it up with which can open your ass up and the person who you lend in your platform to up um with a fucking lawsuit as the first accuser and Daryl Moore are being mm -hmm. oh yes what's going on Leroy hey CTV glad you're doing well bro I'm on vacation oh my god in the Bahamas watching you keep your foot on their necks you know I will <laughs> you know I will why you didn't invite me to the Bahamas because I could have needed a vacation and and you know what you need you need to take me on vacation when this all said and done because I'm working okay I'm working and I'm gonna need a vacation I want to fly right from the last Ohio hearing okay as an in conclusion I want to fly right from that state not back home but right into my goddamn vacation spot okay and you need to fund it Leroy that tab need to be on you you got some time to get it together okay What's going on, Melissa? So I'm going to get out of here, you guys. This wraps up my commentary um, for today. Uh-huh. Um, stay woke. Stay lucid, honey. Stay smart. Okay. Um, yeah, stay woke, honey. We're living in trying times. And the Me Too movement is a genuine movement. But as we, as I stated with Quantasia Sharpton and Janice Dickerson and so many other historical references for clout chasers and liars just wrongly accusing athletes of raping them or accusing celebrities of doing various things that these things are historically documented. And there's another side of the Me Too movement that we need to talk about. And that is not filled with, uh, it's not totally filled with genuine victims. Okay, there are people who are hijacking and 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 co-opting the Me Too movement for their own self gain, like Janice Dickerson, like Quantasia Sharpton, and the likes. Okay, so it doesn't matter that bitches can spread rumors and say somebody did something to them. That doesn't make it real. That don't mean it motherfucking happened. And if you're going to take rumors outside of the confinement of pillow talk, uh, 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 and kitchen table talk. Um, I would hope that you wouldn't spread a rumor unless you know emphatically for that shit to be fucking true. If you don't know the shit to be true, you need to shut the fuck up. Because the way that God got these karmic systems and the law of attraction set up is that any bitch can get any measure of heat that they dish out to another motherfucker. So the universe don't feel bad for your ass when your ass now is on the shorter end of a fucking rumor or the shorter end of a motherfucking narrative or somebody in your life misinterpreting something that you fucking did and being angry at your ass over some shit that wasn't even the case to begin with because once again the universe gotta serve up them dishes cold baby whatever you serve will be served and can be served to you yes 420 fly off into the motherfucking sunset. Fupu was like, I want Larry to sue me. He gets sued and says, I can't believe Larry is suing me. <laughs> make it make motherfucking sense. <laughs> and see, that, 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 that's what he has no continuity. Because his ego is saying, you know, it's coming up with a cover story. Oh, yeah, he walked into my, he walked right into my plan, y'all. But then the whole time, that it was being stated that, oh, this lawsuit is coming. He was saying, oh, you don't want to sue me, Larry. You don't want to sue me. Uh, that discovery process going to be something else. You don't want to do this, boy. You don't want all the stuff I got on you. Daryl, shut up. Just, just shut the hell up. Just shut the entire hell, all the hell, the way them up. Just shut up. Shut up. You're just dumb and manic and Stupid and embarrassing yourself, okay? Along with the rest of the A team, girl. And I, and you know, the way y'all look, girl, I really didn't think that the embarrassment could really go any further. But girl, y'all have showed me that there are levels to this shit, okay? Levels, girl. Now, just when you think you're seeing all of the cringe worthiness you could see in one setting, bitch, there's another layer. <laughs> Another layer. Oh, yes. David says, I didn't believe it because I know Apostle Reed and then the accusers, the accusers lies were bad, didn't add up. Tanya says, the universe says, whatever you read, you, what, whatever you seek is seeking, boom. It's seeking you. Works for good and bad shit alike. Yep. 
energy for energy, light for light, darkness for darkness, baby. That's how it goes. I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have a wonderful motherfucking weekend. If we need to come back, we will at some point in time. Um, I don't plan to be back on this platform this motherfucking weekend, but the way that um this world is set up, child, you just never know. I got some um some good content coming for you guys next week outside of coverage for this case. As you guys know, I am the head media in charge and keeping you guys informed about what is going on moment to moment to moment to moment. Okay. Once again, the Patreon is popping. I'm going to be dropping Larry Reed's um, HIV results into the Patreon along with Daryl's um, service of um, receipt of process receipt of process serving papers in the patreon as well for you all to see so if you have not signed up make sure you go sign up over there it's only five dollars a month this also is a way of contributing to the platform financially if you're not necessarily a paypal or a cash app or and you don't like to submit large sums of money to people well it's only five dollars a month and you can use that as a, as a way to support me as many of my patrons do as well but all the tea all um court documents and everything all that stuff will always go into the patreon okay that this adds nuance and everything else fupa is going to say i wasn't on because my son is graduating <laughs> and i got and i got time no videos he should have said that two years ago boom boom why you why you not on all of a sudden now, huh? Because oh, now your son is a priority. He, uh, he was he should have been a priority uh, uh, four months ago when you was with the shits. He should have been a priority a month ago when you had time to come from Ohio to Atlanta. He should have been your goddamn priority when you were fucking with me last year when you um were fucking with Andrea like. No, girl, like, he should have been your priority. He been a child this whole fucking time that you've been with the fuck shit. So we don't want to hear no, um, you know, you're being dad of the fucking year now when we know the truth is you are cussing his ass out every motherfucking day for being stupid and open up that motherfucking door, girl. Mm-hmm. That's why your ass not on. That's why you're not on, girl. You're not on, bitch, because you know that you done fucked up the church's motherfucking money, bitch, and now... Now, now we gonna Daryl Daryl, bitch. Uh-huh. We gonna Daryl Daryl. Uh-huh. See, Daryl been with the shit for a year and a half. Now we're going to Daryl Daryl. That's how that's gonna go. Sugar mama. Uh-huh, Miss Ma'am. That's what the T gonna be. Don't backpedal and pussy pop now, bitch. Don't Melina roll your ass on out of this one, bitch. Stand 10 toes down and hold your motherfucking ground, baby. All that big boy wolf shit you talk, bitch. Oh, no, honey. I know you not gonna have the time, bitch. All that shit you talk, bitch. All them claims you make, bitch. I know. I just know, girl. You, you ain't gonna be the one who ain't gonna make the time. Are you serious? Are you serious? We want 50 million eleven videos to keep on going, bitch. Mm -hmm. We want you to keep talking that shit, bitch. Mm -hmm. We want you to keep on making promises to these accusers and to your followers that you don't have no plan on fulfilling and making good on. Mm -hmm. We want you to continue to walk your ass right off of a motherfucking cliff, bitch. Mm -hmm. Because not showing up to court, girl, uh, and having this motherfucking injunction and, and this motherfucking uh, judgment, girl, granted on your ass, uh, uh, even if you don't show up and appear in court to motherfucking receive your sentencing, uh, it's just going to have the motherfucking marshal and the motherfucking SWAT team run in on your motherfucking ass, bitch. Uh, oh, yes. Is you ready, Daryl? Is you ready? Is you ready? Are you ready? That's all I want to know. Is you ready? Hmm. Once again, thank all who cash at the bitch. I love so many of you. You guys are just wonderful. I'm crying. I'm quite, I'm quite, and I love y'all. Oh my God. Thank you, T. Trisha. Thank you, Mart. Thank you so much, baby, for your cash app. I love you. 
and y'all go subscribe to T Trisha's um platform, girl, because she's a content creator too, honey. Okay, she has wonderful, wholesome content up on her motherfucking platform. So you guys make sure that y'all subscribe, okay? To my mod, honey, and to every other content creator who's in the building. The view is the view. Um, King Jasmine Smiko, the likes, okay? Because see, David in the comment section is an old member of the church, okay? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. He's an old member. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of members, honey. I'm connecting to a lot of the members. Mm-hmm. Talk to a lot of the members. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Hey, Phyllis. Them niggas ain't on his level. Do we need to hit that one more time before we bow out today? Do I need to run that one more time? Oh, and Miss Nicole Reloaded, honey. Y'all go support Miss Nicole Reloaded, honey. Another wonderful content creator, girl. The A team ain't on Larry's level. Mmm, Fuba ain't on them nigga level. They, they ain't, they ain't. Oh, let's play that, honey. Y'all want to hit the jam on the way out? Let's jam on the way out. Let's do it, honey, on this Friday, baby. Oh, yes. Let's get into the jam of the weekend, baby. Let's set the twerk up. Oh, yes. Hey, what's up, Larry, baby? Listen, this is just a little remix to remind you that you are still the shit mix. Don't even worry about Daryl Moore the Bomb and his beat team minions Because you had a purpose before they even had an opinion You still got much love out here and you are still winning So let those haters hate and let those trolls troll wow. They are just mad because they will never ever rise to your level Y'all haters ain't on his level Y'all haters ain't on his level We're gonna start level. with Daryl Moore. You ain't on this <laughs> and I'll say your name. You Cause from the depths of the hell you came. You a <laughs> dirty old man. You, you came up level. with a lame ass plan. You, you try to take Larry down. Or with a proof that was unfound. You <laughs> Shame on you. you Find something else better to do. Cause that same bitch that you dig you in is the same bitch your ass gonna fall in. You recruited El Carter. And his dumb ass ain't no smart. And as a matter of fact, I think you want Larry's team in your crack. <laughs> Looking like Hannibal Burris You're always making threats But they ain't never done a damn thing yet Ain't you that god of snake Who made fun of Larry's rape <laughs> You'll say it ain't so But when we saw you on a video Shut the hell up and sip your tea Because a badass you'll never be All you do is talk shit With that lame ass 18 clip And now we got big little Kim Who really just wants to sit in I won't go in on you but you so much better than this huh. And Roxanne, Roxanne Daryl don't want to be your man He is just using it, you Because, because he needs a cricket of you Y'all haters ain't on his level Y'all haters ain't on his level Black Mr. Clean Y'all haters ain't on his level Whoever the hell y'all be Y'all the biggest haters I ever seen Give you an A for effort, but you really got an E for epic failure. No go crying at all.